Good morning. Happy Easter. Welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis. Today we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Our hymns and service music are found in the worship sheet. Our entrance hymn is Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. And welcome to all who are joining us here at the Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis, either through your presence here today and through KSDK Channel 5 and our live stream. My brothers and sisters, in this solemn Mass of Easter Day, as your Archbishop, I bestow the apostolic blessing of His Holiness, Pope Francis. This blessing carries the grace of a plenary indulgence under the usual conditions. I invite you, therefore, to repent of your sins and so dispose yourselves to share in the grace of this blessing. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, 
and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly said in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, 
you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witness of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This is the day. struck with power, the right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day. stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, 
and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in and the one who had arrived at the tomb first he saw and he believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed Easter Sunday to you, to all who are present here in our Cathedral Basilica, to all who are joining us on KSDK Channel 5, and those who are on live stream. Welcome to our Easter Sunday Mass. We rejoice in celebrating this day, knowing that God has not given up on us, his people, but has indeed risen over the most feared of any human experience, death itself. We have journeyed over these past days with Jesus through giving us his very self in the Eucharist on Holy Thursday. On Good Friday, we commemorated Jesus being betrayed by Judas, denied by Peter, and put to the most ignominious death that could ever be conceived by humanity. The God who came to earth to bestow us on us his own divine love was rejected by our human race in the most terrific way and yet did not allow us to wallow in our sinfulness, but showed us the way to new life. This is what we celebrate on Easter Day. Sometimes we may think that Mary Magdalene, Peter, and the other disciple, who many believe was St. John, have a great advantage over us. After all, they were there. They had the experience of approaching the empty tomb, of gazing into to see the linen wrappings cast aside to speak with each other in their confusion. But what did they see? At that point, they did not see Jesus, only the empty tomb. There was no great vision, no flash of light, no overpowering presence of a man who had overcome death itself. 
there was merely the empty tomb and the promises of Jesus spoken throughout the gospel that death is not the end. So Mary Magdalene, Peter, and the other disciple had much to think about on that Easter Sunday morning as they peered into the tomb. Had the worst of humanity reared its head again by the stealing of the body of Jesus? Had the forces that influenced the worst upon him struck again to play another cruel joke? Or did the words of Jesus spoken during his public ministry really come true? We do know the rest of the Easter story. The disciples were locked in a room when Jesus appeared to them, beckoning them to faith. Before their eyes, he ascended into heaven after his resurrection. But can we say that they have an advantage over us? Indeed, they witnessed firsthand the works of Jesus and beheld him in his risen body. But we would not be here today unless they spread the message of the resurrection of Jesus overcoming sin and death. The disciples knew that they could not hold this great news unto themselves, that they needed to bring the message of the resurrection to others by the witness of their lives. Great news like this cannot be kept to oneself. It necessarily has to be shared. Our very presence here today is evidence that this message was spread by the disciples of Jesus to give the world hope in the triumph of God over the worst that our humanity can experience. My brothers and sisters, the disciples do not have an advantage over us. We too experience the glorious effects of Jesus' resurrection and the promise of life eternal. We know his presence here on earth at every mass when he feeds us, God's people, with his own body and blood. At the Last Supper, Jesus told his disciples, do this in memory of me. Jesus' resurrection has fulfilled the promise that he would be with us always, even until the end of time. What a great hope is given to us in Jesus' Eucharistic presence. Just like the disciples, we have heard the good news. The Easter message is one that needs to be told, whether in the words of the gospel or in the witness of our lives. The challenge for the disciples on that first Easter was to believe that the tomb was empty for no other reason then Jesus kept his word that death itself would be overcome and would not have the final say. When we come to this mass, believing that the we come to this mass, believing that the empty tomb is the most powerful sign of God's promise being kept for us. And we too are his witnesses to go forth in proclaiming with our lives that the empty tomb indeed makes a difference to us, that our Savior is alive, has risen over sin and death itself, and gives us much, much hope, despite our own sinfulness and our lack of faith. Let us not walk away from the empty tomb, proceeding as though nothing has happened, but let us embrace Jesus, risen from the dead, the beauty of the Easter message, and the good news that cries out to be shared with the world truly in need of Easter hope. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. 
And so now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his work and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously be listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. That our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and Mitchell, our Archbishop, may lead in faith and serve in love the flock entrusted to their care by Christ, the Good Shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the whole world may rejoice in the blessing of true peace, the peace Christ himself gives us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the newly baptized and those received into the faith throughout the world may be strengthened by the gift of new life given to them on this Easter season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our suffering brothers and sisters may have their sorrow turned into lasting joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may have faith and strength to bear witness to Christ's resurrection to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord.
pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. We praise and glory in his name for our good and church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, we laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the, one, the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with all the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Louis, St. Rose Philippine Duchenne, St. Vincent de Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. <coughs> May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people whom you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Oh, oh, oh. 
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. For the distribution of Holy Communion, please follow the direction of the ushers. Please note that there will be distribution stations in the back of the church as well. And those who would like to receive Holy Communion on the tongue are invited to receive at the communion rail. Thank you.
the people God's praises now sing. All of creation in splendor shall ring. Alleluia. Jesus the Son. Alleluia. 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 Now in our presence the Lord will appear, shining Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, His Excellency Archbishop Mitchell Rosansky, by the grace of God and the Apostolic See, Archbishop of this Holy Church of St. Louis will give the apostolic blessing to which a plenary indulgence is attached. In the name of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, to all who are truly repentant and have received the sacraments of penance and Eucharist, pray to God for our Holy Father and our Archbishop, and for the Holy Mother Church, and in full communion with her, strive to walk in fullness of life. The Lord be with you. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by his glorious birth has illumined this most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of sin and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed, who willed that great joy of his Son's saving birth that was announced to the shepherds by the angel. Fill your minds with the gladness he gave and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. And may God, who through the resurrection brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor 
and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. Through the intercession of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul, may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.